Welcome to 2016's Mains Apipedia Question Answer Discussion. Today we'll be taking up ethical issues. We have uh, Mona Ma'am with us today and uh, Mr. Ajay Sondi. So they'll be throwing light upon the ethical issues. Uh, first issue which I have taken up today is euthanasia. So ma'am, would you like to define what is euthanasia? Yeah, sure. Uh, euthanasia is the right to decide, the right to choose when the person is in a vegetative state. There are times in life when uh, the medical treatment doesn't seem to be responding and when the person is in a situation where the chances of recovery are almost not existing. So that is the state when the person should be given the right to decide when to terminate the medical treatment or not. That is euthanasia. Mm -hmm. Sir, how would you like to contribute to this? See, uh, I would like just, she's an expert on ethics, you know, and mm -hmm. as, as far as this issue is concerned, I would just like her to ask whether this, uh, since we don't have any control over birth, you know, we can't have a choice. Why on uh, dying? Uh, well, very right question. Uh, however, it, it may sound very justified from the legal angle. It may sound very, very justified from the social angle as well, that of course any human being has the right to decide when to die and when to, what to do with the body. Uh, however, there are a couple of ethical issues and ethical uh, dimensions involved in this, uh, uh, you can say, statement or uh, question. Uh, now we see that the Indian constitution and the Indian society uh, draws heavily from the Western liberal ideas, okay. ideas, okay. and f directly from that line of thought we can uh, draw the line of thought given by philosopher Immanuel Kant, mm -hmm. ethicist and philosopher Immanuel Kant, and Thomas Aquinas. For instance, Immanuel Kant he says that the you do not have the uh, right to life is given, or you can say is a divine right. Okay. Right. You were, you do not have any right, as you yourself said, that you you cannot decide when you want to be born. You have absolutely no control to choose the parents out of whom you want to be born. So this right is basically a divine right, is a natural right. Okay. So when you have absolutely no control over your right to live and right to birth, basically, okay. then uh, since this is a divine right given by the Almighty, so it is the Almighty which has the right to take away. This is, I'm talking from the perspective of ethics and from the perspective of Immanuel Kant. Okay. Right, so this is, uh, right to life is a divine right and it cannot be taken away Thank you. by any individual. Uh, see, uh, uh, I will tell you a real story. Okay. One of my friends is living in Austria. Okay. So he suffered through, uh, you know, uh, uh, from blood poisoning okay. and he went in coma. Okay. He was hospitalized and uh, after I think around uh, uh, 10 days, doctor said he is brain dead. Okay. dead. And the uh, doctor attending that patient was about to remove that uh, you know, medical equipment. Life support system. Okay. One of the nurses, she told ki, don't please don't remove. Okay. And after 8 minutes, he again came to came back to life. Exactly. Okay. And uh, there is a research going on ki, mm -hmm. how much time the medical science should take to decide whether and when to move that equipment. Exactly. So uh, this is all, you know, this, this control has, with, is with the Almighty God exactly. mm -hmm. and one should, uh, it, it, it is again, uh, you know, the repercussion is on the patient, patients, uh, the, on the attendants who are attending mm -hmm. the patient. It is very hard to take the decision, you know, Correct. In, in our society, especially yes. in India. And there is a high element of subjectivity involved. We cannot, because this is ethics and because it deals with human beings, we cannot just say that 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. Yes. As in physical sciences. Yes. We are dealing with human beings. Very, very, you can say, uh, the dynamism, the, the dynamic nature of the subjects here in, uh, you can say, gives beauty to this subject and uh, there cannot be uh, there cannot be an objective answer whether fine uh, you are decided about the candidate that the person cannot recover from the current state and so okay fine uh, we decide to go for passive or active euthanasia okay. it is not possible we have medical sciences we have research is supporting where in patients even uh, going in for uh, going into coma going into such a vegetative state they uh, were recovered and they came back to life and they are still leading life like normal people so it is um, I don't think it as a very wise decision of course uh, there are uh, times in life when uh, you 
think it is like I must add when you think in commas when you think or when the medical sciences supports that the person has no chances of recovery mm -hmm. but we have seen miracles happening so because this is ethics I am mm -hmm. telling from ethical angle I'm not telling from medical sciences angle I'm not telling from legal and social angle I'm mm -hmm. telling from ethics angle mm -hmm. so we have absolutely no right and of course there are dilemmas in life but uh, Kant and uh, other philosophers and ethicists have been supporting this argument saying okay. that uh, we, uh, the right to live, the right to life is a divine right and we cannot uh, take it away. There is a question ma'am. See right now we have a bill over euthanasia which we are considering yeah. and it's in the parliamentary standing committee. As per Supreme Court decision upon euthanasia, it must be considered by a High Court committee on yeah. a case-to-case -case basis. Yeah. That's so what I was uh, yeah. uh, trying to ask you Mr. Yeah. Vishay, ki throw some light on the legal angle. Sir, legally we have sir, a right to equality as well as right to life in our constitution. So, as a vegetative person, you know, he will not be able to decide, his family would be a deciding factor, one. So, socially we have to see whether India is ready for this or not. Okay. Secondly, from the legal perspective here, another thing, right to life is ensured to a citizen, but state has a right, a right to take away that life also through a set process, hmm. that, that process we have. So, in a punitive kind of cases, we can think yeah. about uh, uh, taking away right to life, like uh, hanging is still continuing, you know, Correct. hang until death. This still happens in India. But when you talk about euthanasia, here the person is helpless. In India, I guess, cancer patients and uh, the others who are missing out on palliative care, they are the ones who most want the euthanasia. Huh? Because in India, we have a uh, lack of palliative care. Mm -hmm. Only drugs that uh, people get that's towards the end of their life is morphine. You know? yeah. That's the only drug prescribed whether you go to PJ or you mm. go to anywhere. So for the last two or three days, they'll give you morphine and that's it. Mm. For a long-term palliative care management, we don't have any support in India. And that is why out of pain, people want death. Right. Second thing, out of a lack of social support, people want death. If they're not able to continue with their life mm. on a regular basis. So then also they would want to go for euthanasia, active or passive, like you said. So, what should be the dimensional coverage if we now try to comprehensively tell about the answer? The ethical, like the ma'am said, it's the almighty's decision. I would like to add upon one thing, uh, yeah. as uh, has been uh, pointed out by you about the legal and the societal social issues angle. See, uh, legislation, as we all know, is, is a very uh, tricky yeah. affair of meticulously balancing the claims and stakes of various stakeholders mm. right it involves legal issue, legal angle perspective it involves the uh, ethical obviously comes later on because obviously culturally we all know India uh, therein not much emphasis is being paid to the development of the ethical and the moral dimensions of the personality of a human being. So uh, we were uh, I mean, coming back to this piece of legislation. It needs to meticulously balance in the claim of uh, the legal stakeholders then from the social perspective and uh, then from the you can say constitutional and polity perspective okay. and the reason why it has been it was put on the website of uh, the particular ministry uh, to have the feed feedback from the citizens and from the society was this reason only that as you pointed out whether the society is ready mm -hmm. whether the society what type of receptivity what type of acceptance will mm -hmm. the society give to this particular piece of legislation mm -hmm. and that was the reason why because they don't not want to make a law do, do not want to impose any law on mm. the society when the society is not ready yeah, that because, is exactly uh, yeah. reason. because essentially ethics is what is socially acceptable exactly yeah? exactly okay so that should summarize this issue thank you so much thank, thank you, you. Thank you.